Let's begin with a question. Our topic being spiritual awakening is not enlightenment. Keeping that in mind, here's the question. Before you set off for a destination that matters to you, wouldn't it be a good idea to type the right address into your GPS? Like that, this video aims to help you gain clarity about spiritual awakening. Have you heard that it's the same thing as spiritual enlightenment? Then I'm glad you found this video because it can set you thinking in a productive direction. Thinking about something so inspiring using your full consciousness potential in life. That's what, I'm gonna repeat that because that might be the most important common denominator to spiritual awakening and also spiritual enlightenment. Using your full consciousness potential in life. You see, spiritual awakening is our topic for today, along with spiritual enlightenment. What could be more important than having authentic spiritual experience, such as waking up your own personal connection to God? Now that I've introduced this video, how about I introduce myself to I'm Rose Rose Tree, an enlightenment teacher who has helped many people to live in spiritual enlightenment and the author of Seeking Enlightenment in the Age of Awakening. So far, I have served as a spiritual teacher for over 50 years. First, teaching transcendental meditation for my former guru, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And then in 1995, I resigned from teaching TM. And ever since 1996, I've been co-creating the field of energy spirituality, where all of the trademark systems and books and blog posts, and even this YouTube video are co-created with God. First of all, what is spiritual enlightenment? Spiritual enlightenment is a way of life. It's not merely a sweet experience or two. Ideally, once achieved, enlightenment lasts for the rest of your life. Maybe you're wondering, what are its defining characteristics? Here are five of the most important things to know. Bing! Illusions do not fool you anymore. At least, illusions don't fool you for long. Bing! Number two, ever fresh dawning of spiritual truth. That can happen for you, gently surprising you many times each day beautifully enhancing, not replacing, enhancing your regular human experience. In enlightenment, you're using your full potential consciousness. That means finding it easier than before to learn whatever you choose, whether for emotional growth, spiritual connection to the divine, or simply to be of service to the people who matter to you. Why the accelerated learning? Simply put, you have much less inner resistance to life. Number four, a unified sense of self. A unified sense of self pervades all your waking hours. That's quite different from everyday struggles to figure out, who am I? Or 
Maharishi used to call this the football experience. Uh, before enlightenment, each of us is like the football of circumstances, while in enlightenment, we are ourselves having life. Our sense of self does not depend on what people say we are, or if people like us, or other things that could really be as random as a football bouncing around, getting kicked around. With a unified sense of self, we can appreciate ourselves as who we are, And that is quite a shift from before enlightenment when it's typical to have a zillion ways to define ourselves, often depending on random things that other people say or do or tweet. Bing! Number five, compared to pre-enlightenment, God is more strongly present within you. Strictly speaking, this is a matter of degree, since every human alive possesses some underlying connection to the divine. Wonderfully, though, in enlightenment, that subtle sense of connection becomes far stronger. Quite possibly, you could read this sort of description all day long, and it would make you feel Happy, happy, happy. But would that move you into enlightenment? Nah. I think clarity is going to serve you better. So let's go for some. To be clear, clarity will not bring you enlightenment. But knowledge can at least help you head in a direction that will result in your day. And let's remember, there isn't only some beautiful sightseeing destination like Paris. Spiritual enlightenment is a way of experiencing life all the way down to how that deep consciousness within you works. Enlightenment means that the presence of God is strong and bright within you and dependable. Now, now let's add more clarity about spiritual awakening. By that, I do not mean some of the happy talk. Happy talk. Happy talk you've undoubtedly encountered lately, where somebody makes vague promises to you about spiritual awakening and probably tells you you have had it. Thanks to the internet, idealized content about spiritual awakening, it has become today's most popular clickbait concerning religion and spirituality. For instance, Here's something that you might find shocking. I did, I did. Recently, I Googled on two very different search terms, spiritual awakening and spiritual enlightenment. Can you guess how many hits came up? Google gave me close to seven and a half million hits on spiritual awakening versus for spiritual enlightenment, two million, seven and a half million versus two million. Mm. What's going on here? Ever since what I call the new age years, and by the way, we've all lived through at least some of those new age years, I suspect. The new age years lasted from 1980 until the shift into the Age of Awakening on December 21st, 2012. That's a lot of years. And ever since those new age years, one 
crazy popular trend has emerged where experts will refer to spiritual awakening or simply awakening for short, as though that is today's cooler way of talking about the ancient concept still valid today of spiritual enlightenment. Just a cooler way of talking about spiritual enlightenment? I don't think so. In truth, what's the meaning of spiritual awakening? It's an experience with more energetic intensity than whatever you're used to. That sounds good, but listen again. Spiritual awakening is only an experience with more energetic intensity than whatever you're used to. Now, quite likely, since you're watching, and I'm glad you're here, by the way, quite likely you've enjoyed some of this spiritual awakening by now. So you don't need me to tell you how encouraging it can feel. For one thing, it's inspiring when your awareness expands beyond everyday sorrow or boredom or even a pretty darn good everyday happiness. Sometimes an experience of spiritual awakening can make you feel as though you've touched the feet of God somehow. Another version is that you might feel spiritually big, big, big in an entirely new and unexpected way you could never have imagined, but there you are as if galloping toward the destination where you most want to arrive. <sighs> Life-changing though spiritual awakening can be Hello. In reality, an experience is just an experience. It's part of your progress toward enlightenment. It is definitely not to be confused, if you're wise, with arriving at your goal. This progressing toward enlightenment, if you're wise, definitely is not something to confuse with reaching spiritual enlightenment, the goal, the way of life. Fact is, enlightenment is so much better than spiritual awakening. The good news is you can definitely move toward it. You can, and since you happen to be living now in the age of awakening, if you choose your teacher wisely and you follow through with what that teacher recommends, you have a very good chance of achieving it. That's the good news. What's the not so good news? The not so good news is how many of today's spiritual teachers, knowingly or not, are contributing to a great big mess? When did this confusing mess begin? As I recall, loose talk about spiritual awakening, it grew popular during those new age years. Remember 1980 until the shift on December 21st, 2012. That's when it began, and it sure is continuing. And who knows how long this nonsense will continue? Maybe you're wondering specifically, which kind of loose talk do I mean? Conflating or holding high. One enjoyable little experience with a long-term way 
of living. That's the kind of loose talk. Is that even worthy of an intelligent teenager? No, intelligent teenagers can do better. And so can those of us who are called grownups. We can do better. And why do better? Because significant problems arise for every spiritual seeker, every beautiful spiritual seeker who lowballs the concept of spiritual enlightenment. Please consider this, and if it makes sense to you, spread the word. Ooh, hello. Spiritual awakening is not enlightenment. Look, I'm going to give you two perspectives on this. First, my personal perspective, and then my professional perspective as an enlightenment teacher. Yeah, let's start with a personal perspective. As a big seeker of enlightenment for year after year after year, here's how I learned the difference technically between spiritual awakening and enlightenment. For a while, about 16 years, I taught transcendental meditation and I adored every word spoken by my guru at the time, His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. He got some things right, including how he would insist repeatedly that enlightenment meant more than flashy experiences. He was then talking about what today would be called, you guessed it, spiritual awakening. Do you realize that any cute looking influencer can gain credibility as a spiritual expert, et cetera. Over the years, like you probably, I've encountered plenty of experts who don't have the standing to teach about enlightenment. And they also, so many I've encountered, so many of them curry favor with potential students by flattering them or even outright lying to them. For instance, for instance, once I Googled, attend my non-duality retreat and gain spiritual awakening. How many hits on my Google for that one? Want to guess? Shockingly, 125,000 hits. What's that? Guaranteed awakening? for the price of admission? You know, if P.T. Barnum were living today, he's the one who said a sucker is born every minute. If he were living today, he would be very proud of that idea, that pitch. Attend my new non-duality retreat and eh, yeah, you'll gain spiritual awakening. Why, is it like giving somebody a pretzel when they come in the door? <laughs> now, how about professionally? Professionally, how did I learn that spiritual awakening is not enlightenment? This education developed during some of the energy spirituality sessions I have facilitated for people, good, caring people who came to me for enlightenment coaching. Did I mention energy spirituality yet? That's the name of the field that I have co-created, have founded, where I've been working since 1986. Anyhow, many spiritual seekers have found me after a beautiful experience of spiritual awakening, left them inspired, but also very confused. Also, some clients came to me after attending non-duality retreats, and those non-duality retreats through their auras way out of whack. Glad to say I was able to co-create help using different skills developed in energy spirituality. I was able to use skills to help them regain a better balance in life. So confused, 
or wrecking their lives? Does this sound wonderful to you? Professionally, this is how I began to understand the mess that exists in the imaginations and in the hearts of so many beautiful spiritual seekers. And instead of aiming for spiritual awakening, we could find a good teacher and aim for and maybe even achieve spiritual enlightenment like the real deal. Back to spiritual awakening and untrustworthy ideas about that. This really may seem appealing now, but it could be compared to eating candy. And you know, you don't need me to tell you, although I could, how much fun it is to eat candy, but there's also such a thing as eating too much candy, like a lot too much candy. Combining spiritual awakening and untrustworthy ideas about it can even wreck a person's life, at least for a while. Totally opposite to the better life and greater success in life that open up when people achieve and start living in spiritual enlightenment. No kidding, spiritual enlightenment makes life better. Whereas spiritual awakening combined with confusion can make a person's life uh, worse. So I'm actually gonna give you a couple of examples here. I started off by learning from the examples and maybe these abstractish ideas that I'm conveying to you will seem more real to you and more trustworthy if I tell you a couple of these examples. So the first example is how I've had some students who came to me for enlightenment coaching because they had one experience or a few experiences of what they considered spiritual awakening. Remember, an experience with more energetic intensity than what you're used to? That is not necessarily anywhere in the ballpark of moving toward enlightenment. It could be an experience on drugs that feels very splendid. But anyway, I'm thinking of some of the students who come to me for enlightenment coaching. And often I learned in the session, a person like Gladys, she made her appointment after she quit her job or she created some other drama. She crossed some Rubicon. Oh my gosh, she, she would do anything for God. And so she did that dramatic thing and she did it because she believed that because she had even one experience that she considered spiritual awakening that she had arrived I helped best I could, but I couldn't give Gladys her job back, you know. Another example, some confused and trusting spiritual seekers who were convinced by their spiritual teachers or things they read through our friendly internet. These trusting, sweet people were persuaded, they were convinced that they must make big changes to support their new realization because that spiritual awakening experience meant, meant to be, sequence must follow and they must make what I would call drastic and unwise changes to their lives. What was the common, common denominator? for these people who went off the deep end to some degree, to some splashy degree, because of what they had been promised about how spiritual awakening was supposedly the whole goal.
if misled, sweet, beautiful spiritual seekers are willing to trash whatever seems to stand in the way of more and more and more spiritual awakening. If you've ever felt homesick for heaven, you can sympathize. But if you have felt homesick for heaven, nothing is going to satisfy you while you're living on earth as much as moving into the consciousness lifestyle of enlightenment. Well, moving toward conclusion, I'm really glad that you've been listening to this video, watching this video, so that you can give yourself clarity to protect you from this kind of mess I've just given examples of. Because the whole point of seeking enlightenment is to gain enlightenment, but the secondary point is to have a better life, right? A better life. Every caring lover of God who would do anything for God or would do a lot for God, we deserve a better life, not a worse life, huh? Ugh. So the way I'm going to conclude here is just to say that experiences of spiritual awakening, they are beautiful. But please don't mistake them for the goal. Enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment means using your full consciousness potential in life. Please don't settle for anything less. Don't settle for it and don't call it enlightenment because that's just not fair. Well, thank you for listening and watching everybody. If you liked this YouTube video, please give it a thumbs up and consider following up by reading your own copy of my new how-to book that contains a complete program for spiritual enlightenment. It's called Seeking Enlightenment in the Age of Awakening. You're also welcome to go to my website, roserosetree.com. You're welcome to read my blog and comment there. I'll personally respond. It's an educational blog and you just might really like it. Meanwhile, bye for now.